Hello and welcome to another lecture of classical motion of a single particle. In this lecture, we simply continue our discussion on various properties of Euler Lagrange equation. So, just before starting, as usual, I give you some points of recapitulation. So, here for this course, we just say if a particle, single particle motion we are studying, okay, throughout this course has n effective degrees of freedom okay that means in generalized coordinates okay then for each co generalized coordinate q i where i can run from 1 to n okay we have d d t of del l del q i dot minus del l del q i is equal to 0. Remember when I say once again in generalized coordinates that means this is the minimum number of coordinates necessary to describe the particle. Okay? So, to describe the situation of the particle it means that this is the minimum number of independent coordinates okay, required to locate the particle. Okay? Now, this L is known as the Lagrangian of the particle or in general we say for a system okay and for a particle moving under a potential v okay or we say that particle uh, or associated with a scalar function v okay which is the potential of course if we say that then the lagrangian is L is equal to T minus V. Okay? And actually, when we derive the equation of Euler Lagrange from D'Alembert's principle, we directly derived only for this specific form, if you remember. So, T minus V, but then I just mentioned in previous lectures that Lagrangian is much more general, although this will lie beyond the scope of this present course, but for your knowledge, you should understand that T minus V is just the expression of a Lagrangian of a simple mechanical system okay, which is moving under a potential V. Okay. If for example, the particle is not moving uh, in a field where you can associate a potential function, okay, then you cannot actually write L is equal to T minus V. Also, the way we derived, we just assumed that this V is a function of q i's okay that means only the generalized coordinates but not the generalized velocities so can we also have some systems where we can have the form intact of or the lagrangian the t minus v but then v will be a function of both q i and q i dots so these are the questions you can think and you can search over internet so the answer is yes for certain systems you can also have a lagrangian where you can still have a form t minus v, but that v can be a velocity dependent potential. Okay? So, the potential may or may not include the velocities, okay? but this is also specific to the system. Okay? It is not a guarantee that always you will have this form, okay? uh, even if you can define in a potential which is a function of both q i and q i dots. Okay? So, 
at least for a particle under a potential which is a function of positions only, okay, we can without any problem write L is equal to T minus V. Okay. Now, we said that this form of this equation is very particular and it actually enables us to make two type of very simple uh, operations. One is you can multiply the L by alpha L where alpha is a non-zero constant okay? and you can see that Euler Lagrange equation is unchanged. Okay. So, if L is a valid Lagrangian for a system given the set of generalized coordinates Q wise, alpha L will also be a valid Lagrangian of the system mathematically. Then we said that if L is now added or subtracted to a constant of equal dimension k, okay, then L plus k will also be a valid Lagrangian. Okay. We introduced the concept of cyclic coordinates. We said that if the Lagrangian does not contain one or more generalized coordinates explicitly in its expression, okay, then so, let us say if the Lagrangian does not contain q y star, then del L del q y star will be equal to 0 and from Euler Lagrange equation you can easily say the DDT of del L del q y star dot will be equal to 0 and that means this will be a conserved quantity of motion okay and we said this is known as the conjugate momentum of qi star and called or denoted by and denoted by pi star Okay. So, we have just said in the last lecture that if uh, we are considering a two dimensional motion where the potential is a function of r only that means the modulus of the uh, position vector, okay, then using plane polar coordinates you can show that the Lagrangian is not explicitly depending on theta, okay. although theta dot is there, theta is not there and that is why okay, del L del theta dot will be a conserved quantity okay? and we showed that this is nothing but the magnitude of the angular momentum. Okay. We said something interesting as well at the very end we said that if the Lagrangian does not contain time explicitly that is del L del T is equal to 0. Okay. By, the, by the way this does not say this is not equivalent of saying d l d t is equal to 0. Okay. d l d t is the total time derivative of the Lagrangian, okay, which is actually, so d l d t is nothing but del l del t plus del l del q i q i dot summation over i of course plus, I mean 1 to small n as you know and here that will be del L del q i dot q i double dot. Okay. The whole thing basically constitutes d L d t. So, del L del t is just one part of this and if del L del t is 0, we showed that this quantity L minus summation over q i dot del L del q i dot okay, summation over i is a constant of motion. Okay. 
and we call that minus h where minus h is nothing but minus t plus v and from that we consider just so just for the case of one single particle okay we showed that this h is nothing but t plus v that is the total mechanical energy and so lagrangian does not explicitly contain time means that somehow the mechanical energy conservation is assured okay now at this point i want to make a caution that for every lagrangian the corresponding even if it has a i mean very known form or if it corresponds to a mechanical system it is not necessary that the h would actually correspond to the total mechanical energy even if in some cases the lagrangian can be written as t minus v for some unknown mechanical system specifically where you know t is the so called kinetic energy and v is the potential energy it is not always possible to write h is equal to t plus v okay there are subtle conditions for example one condition at at this moment for you it may look a little bit strange but one condition is for example that the kinetic energy should be a quadratic function of the generalized velocities now you will say okay i mean this is the case for one single particle in classical mechanics that's true that's why more specifically for a single particle there is no problem if you are talking about a motion in a conservative potential right okay but the point occurs when you are talking of a general system okay for example may not be a uh, physics or mechanical system may be a biological system may be a socio economic system okay for that this is not guaranteed however you may encounter this lagrangian formalism in various arenas of science and uh, social sciences okay and that's why i give you this caution so finally we said that okay uh, this is the also so this is the total mechanical energy for our case at least okay now what i will continue in today's lecture is to discuss about another interesting property of lagrangian so that is if let's say i just write a new lagrangian from this uh, old lagrangian l i define a new lagrangian l plus df dt where f is a function of only qi and qt qi means qi uh, from 1 to n can have any number of qi's okay maybe a function of q1 q2 q3 only or q1 q2 q4 for example if you have sufficient number of generalized coordinates okay so when i just write qi it is not one single qi but in general with i mean the generalized coordinates so it can also explicitly contain t but it should not contain generalized velocity okay so if i have an extra term which is no longer a constant already i mean we have already seen that if you can write l prime is equal to l plus some constant then it is evidently a valid lagrangian as well but if it is not a constant but something like this then the question is will l prime be a lagrangian for the or valid lagrangian for the said system so we know del l del q i dot and d d t of that quantity minus del l del q i will be equal to 0 for all i running from 1 to n okay individually so now the question is the question is d d t of del l prime del q i dot minus del l prime del q i is also equal to 0 or not okay with the same set of generalized coordinates for that we will somehow show this explicitly and we will see that 
it will actually be a proper Lagrangian for the set system as well. So, for that what I will do, I just write, okay, let us define L prime will be equal to L plus d d t of a function f, which is q y, I mean which is a function of q y and t, okay. And we first calculate del del q y dot d f d t. So, d f d t is the new member, okay. We just first calculate del del q dot q y dot of this quantity. So, since f is a function of q y and t, what will be the definition of d d t for this function? So, it will simply be del f del t plus del f del q i q y dot with a summation over i. Now, you see there will be no term involving del f del q y dot because q f does not contain q y dots. Okay. If you have this, you can say, so we know for this system, so whenever we are talking about generalized coordinates, we know that all the generalized coordinates generalized velocities and time, they are having no explicit dependence on one another. Okay. Although we know that q y and q y dot, they are changing in course of time, but while defining Lagrangian for example, so we said that Lagrangian is a function of q y, q y dot and t. That means, here when I talking about t, I am meaning the explicit appearance of t in Lagrangian and not the implicit appearance through q y and q y dots. So, in this sense q y, q y dot and t they are independent okay, e a priori. Okay. Of course, whenever you know the expression of Lagrangian for a system, you know q i, q i dot, t all are related. You find the relation by solving the motion. Okay. So, that is not something we are talking here. We are saying a priori for this Lagrangian it can be a function of three independent things, generalized coordinates, generalized velocity and generalized and, and time. Okay. So, one is independent of the other and the del del operators that is the partial derivative operators with respect to one of them would must commute with the partial derivative with respect to the other one. Okay. Because there is no constraint between them. Uh, and you see that is the advantage of choosing a system with generalized coordinates. You are not uh, working with a coordinate system where you cannot claim that the coordinates or the generalized velocities they are related by a constraint. Okay? Already you are getting rid of all type of constraints by choosing a proper coordinate system or a set of coordinates okay, by which you can say okay, now I have these coordinates and they are the minimum number of coordinates which are necessary to describe the motion. I have their generalized velocities and they are also independent of each other and they are independent of the generalized coordinates and there is time. So, explicit dependence of time is also independent of both the dependence on generalized coordinates and velocities. Okay. If you have all these things in mind, then you can write. I can commute del del t and del del q y dot over here. I can simply say, so del del t del f del q y dot plus here also I will have something inside. So, you will see this quantity actually does not depend on q y dot in any ways. f is a function of q y and t and if you take the partial derivative with respect to q y you will never expect a q y dot to appear because there is no d d t. Okay? And that is why you can also write this is equal to summation number i del del q y. Okay? So, I can simply write del f del q y dot the same thing huh? that del del q y dot will actually commute with this one and to show that this is exactly equal to 0. Okay. 
times q y dot plus there will be a third term which will be now here this term is a function of q y's, but you see that here I have to use the notation a little bit carefully. So, that the dummy indices cannot be confused with the free index over here. Okay. So, I can just write now j and now you can say okay, actually I should write this as well here. So, I should write j and this is q y. So, it is also j okay. and the here this is j. Yeah. I will now write del f del q j okay, del q j dot by del q i dot. Okay. Now, this is 0 when j is not equal to i, it is exactly like del v x del v y okay. and if i is equal to j then this is del v x del v x, this is 1. Okay. So, we call this is nothing but a chronic delta i j which is a symbol to just make that this is 1 when i is equal to j and 0 when i not equal to j. Okay. So, if some this chronic delta is now multiplied with this finally, you will have from this term you will have simply this. So, the only surviving term will be del f del q i. Okay because you see all the other terms will be 0 which are for all the j's where j is not equal to i this term will be 0 and that is why there is no meaning. So, the finally, the term which has q j is equal to q i will survive and here this part will be 1 and you will have this. So, finally, we can write del del q i dot okay, of d f d t is nothing but equal to del del t of. So, I can do further simplification over here. Now, we can observe this is also 0. So, I should not even write this one. I just go to this expression again. So, this will be finally, del f del q i okay? because I observe this is also 0 for the same reason. f does not contain q y explicitly, q y dots explicitly sorry, f does not contain q y dot explicitly. Okay. This is my first relation which is needed. Okay. Then I will calculate, so if this is equal to this, so I can now say that okay, ddt of del del q i dot d f d t will be simply ddt of del f del q i. Okay. I also make this one in box because this is the important one for us as well. Okay. And then finally, I write del del I change the color somehow here. Yeah. So, then I have del del q i d f d t. Okay. So, this again is nothing but del del q i and d f d t I can write now del f del t plus summation over j again. So, del f del q j q j dot okay. and I will first say that I can commute this and this here okay, for the reasons I have already discussed. So, that will be then del del t of del f del q i okay, and then. So, then I will have summation over j. Okay. So, you see that this will act this this will act on both of them, but on this this cannot act because this is already q j dots. 
So, del q j dot del q i is always 0 whatever the value whatever the relation between i and j. So, this is exactly like del x dot del x okay, or del x dot y del y both of them are 0. Okay. So, yes. So, what I will have I will simply have the action of this operator on this part okay. and then I will simply have q j dot. Okay. I can now say look this I can also permute because all the q i and q j they are independent of each other. So, either you will have del 2 f del x del x where commutation is just trivial or you will have del 2 f del x del y where you can always write del 2 f del y del x for an exact differential or for an exact point function f. Okay. So, that we have assumed that f is a point function or a state function of q i and t. Okay. That means, that at every point of x i and t you can find its value. Okay. Okay. So, I have to now do something yeah. So, del del t of del f del q i, but for this one I have to do now the summation. So, del q j I do the commutation and then I have this q j dot. So, you see this expression is actually nothing but d d t of del f del q y. Okay. Now, see this is also another function g which is a function of q y and t as well. Okay. So, if you see that this one is this and this one is this, okay, I can actually write in a more compact way. So, I just now take again the blue color. So, del del q i d f d t is equal to d d t of del f del q i. Okay. So, you see that actually from this relation and from this relation you can say that this term is totally equal to this term because the right hand term is exactly the equal for both these equations. So, what is the conclusion? The conclusion is that d d t of del del q i dot d f d t where f is a function of q i and t only minus del del q i of d f d t is equal to 0. Okay. Now, we already have for this system, we already have d d t of del del q y dot l minus del del q y of l is equal to 0 for the system. And we show this one that we show. Okay. So, if you now add or subtract, you can actually say well, so L prime actually is equal to even L plus minus d f d t will actually always satisfy. You just can sum these two equations. So, I can write less in complementary colors yes. Okay. So, you can sum them up or you can subtract the second one from the first one okay. and you will have actually in both cases you will have d d t of del l prime del q i dot. Okay. Here I am just trying to tell you one thing that 
I am just making the definition a little bit general, I am just making here a minus over here. Okay. So, this minus del L del Q i will be equal to 0 for all i running from 1 to n. Okay. So, we have seen that if the total derivative of a function which is a function of only generalized coordinates and time is added or subtracted from the original Lagrangian, still we have a valid Lagrangian. Okay. So, this is a symmetry property of Lagrangian. So, what does it mean? It simply means that let us say you have a Lagrangian half m x square. Okay. You do not have any v for example, I am just giving an example, okay, a disparate example, okay, example. So, what is the equation of motion for this particle? The equation of motion for this particle is d d t. So, del L del x dot minus del L del x will be equal to 0 and you know del L del x will be 0 because you cannot see here x. So, for this Lagrangian x is a cyclic coordinate and you can directly say that is why this is 0. So, this is a conserved quantity and this is nothing but m x dot is equal to constant. So, this is the conjugate momentum corresponding to the coordinate x. Now, here the coordinate and the generalized coordinates they are synonymous that is why you have your conjugate momentum and the traditional momentum linear momentum they are the same here. Okay. But if you have this, okay, the equation of motion is actually given by this which is the equation of a free particle. I make a barrier. I now say what happens for Lagrangian half m x dot square minus beta x dot. Well, you will say oh this is something then related to may be damping or some non conservation because first of all I cannot see T minus V form here. I can see some dependence on velocity, but remember this is a dependence in uh, on generalized velocity in Lagrangian and you have to before concluding you have to be sure that whether this Lagrangian is just not something very trivial like the original Lagrangian which I called L O plus minus some d f d t, where f is a function of x and t for this problem. Now, here you see beta is a constant and x dot is nothing but, so this I can actually write beta, so d d t of beta times x. Okay. So, beta times x is a function of x. So, actually this Lagrangian is no different than L 0. I mean now the question is of course, the Lagrangian is different. Now, in which sense I am saying no different? Because we will see in a while that if you now do del L del x dot, you will have m x dot minus beta, but then if you do d d t of del L del x dot, you will have this is constant. So, you will still have m x double dot and del L del x is 0 even here because x does not appear here explicitly, it is only x dot which is appearing. So, finally, you will have Euler Lagrange equation gives m x double dot is equal to 0 here as well. Okay. So, this is a Lagrangian which produces the same equation of motion as L 0. So, that is in the sense I said they are the same Lagrangian. So, the proper way of saying this is they are equivalent Lagrangians. So, here L 0 and 
L are equivalent Lagrangians. Okay, because equivalent means they produce the same equations of motion. Okay. Now, you try to understand why this is, uh, I mean why the Lagrangian, I mean uh, is, I mean the, I mean why the form of the Lagrangian is different, but finally we are happy with this equivalence, because it is just like a potential. So, potential itself in the Newtonian approach, traditional approach, we saw that potential can be added to a constant or subtracted a constant from the potential value because it is finally the del del x or the gradient of potential in more than one dimensional space is of importance because that is the force that creates the dynamics. Here we are not forgetting that information that our point of interest starts at dynamics which is gradient of v or force. Here also our point of interest starts from the equation of motion. Okay? and not for the Lagrangian itself. But why we are doing this? Because the point is that for some systems, it is much more easier to, it is much easier to gather information about the Lagrangian. Huh? So, if for example, if it is a just a classical uh, mechanical system, very intuitively you can write the Lagrangian is, I mean kinetic energy minus potential energy if it is also moving associated with a scalar potential, then it is much more easier to write than balancing the force. Okay? So, for example, I mean, and, and for this reason, basically use of Lagrangian is much more advantageous, but you remember that from the classical mechanics point of view, we always start from dynamics and that is our point of interest to start. Okay? Lagrangian is just an alternative medium to uh, obtain those equations of dynamics without doing the force balance method. Okay? Just we also presented D'Alembert's principle and also Lagrange's equation of first kind, this is also another method. Okay? And for several problems, it becomes much more handy. Okay? The basic advantage of Lagrangian lies in its application in the various field of science and social sciences. Okay? So, for as far as this course of classical mechanics of a single particle is concerned, here I am just presenting this just as an alternative tool and do not overthink that this is the most fundamental one than the uh, Newtonian mechanics of force balancing, everything is fundamental. For us, the fundamental point of interest is this equations of motion. Okay? And the final goal is to find x as a function of t, x dot as a function of t. Finally, another interesting property of Lagrangian which may seem to be very evident for some of you, but somehow I am mentioning this because it is also very useful to uh, discuss various problems in classical mechanics. Let us say you have two different systems. Okay? Let us say in this course, we are since we are just discussing the motion of single particle, I am just thinking of two boxes. In each box 1 and 2, okay, the two boxes, in each box there is a single particle which is moving under different situations. So, the for the first box, let us say I am talking about a single particle which is just acting as a simple pendulum okay, with respect to this plane. Okay. So, it is just a 2D box you can think as a rectangle okay. and the particle is actually performing a motion okay, in this plane of paper and you can just simply think that the length of this string is constant, okay, let us say some L and the mass of the particle is M. Okay. And of course, you now know that theta will be the only possible generalized coordinate. I have another box which is totally separated from this one and the box does not know what is happening inside this box and the same thing for this box that this one does not know what is happening inside this box. Okay? So, 
let us say I am now talking about another particle okay, which is moving in this box which is now a let us say 3D box a particle is moving on the surface of a sphere okay, and the sphere radius is constant. Okay, so, it will have two uh, generalized coordinates theta and phi. Okay. Now, I know that I will have a Lagrangian for this uh, particle, I will have another Lagrangian for this particle. Okay. Now, the point is that if they have nothing to do with each other, then what will be, can we also talk about a combined Lagrangian for the combined system. Okay. So, since they are non-interacting, of course, a combined system is just like a summation of those two systems and uh, so you can imaginarily think that there is no exchange between these two systems. So, I can simply then say if I imagine a combined system taking account of both these non-interacting systems box 1 and box 2. So, box 1 is 2D and box 2 is 3D okay. and due to some constraints which are 1 for this I mean for our specific case. So, this is having one constraint that is the length is constant, this is having one constraint that is the radius is constant. constant. So, it has one generalized coordinate and it has two generalized coordinates. So, I can actually say that I can define if 1 and 2 are non-interacting, I can define a composite or a combined system 1 plus 2 let us say with three generalized coordinates okay so basically one for this theta and another theta and phi for this one but these two theta should not be confused so i just write this one as theta 1 because this is representing the box 1 and this is theta 2 i because this is representing the motion of a particle in box 2 so i can now write theta 1, theta 2 and phi okay. and this becomes meaningful if and only if I can describe or I can define a meaningful Lagrangian for the combined system. And if you just think a little bit from the basic nature of Lagrangian, it actually comes out that then if I suggest that L 1 plus L 2 is equal to some L will be the Lagrangian for the combined system would that be ok. That means, can we also claim that for that combined system, what is the meaning of being ok? That means, can we somehow write that for the combined system d d t of del l del q i dot minus del l del q i is equal to 0, where q i for our case can be equal to theta 1, theta 2 and phi and for a general system it will be then the collection of all the generalized coordinates of all the component systems. Okay. They are called the component systems, this is called a composite system. Okay. So, this is a composite system. And you will see there is no problem because if you write L as L 1 plus L 2, so theta 1 will only act on L 1. 
is okay. So, actually what happens that if you take for theta 1 okay, you will have del L del Q i dot will be simply equal to del L 1 plus L 2 del theta 1 dot, but you know that L 2 has nothing to do with theta 1 dot. So, it will simply take del L 1 del theta 1 dot and del L del Q i will then be simply del L del theta okay, which will be del L 1 del theta 1 and del L 1 del theta 1 because once again L 2 has nothing to do with theta 1. Okay. And so, for theta 1 you will actually have this is this and this is this. Okay. But we know ddt of del L 1 del theta 1 dot minus del L 1 del theta 1 is equal to 0. So, just by substituting this you can actually write that using these equalities okay, you can write the ddt of del L del theta 1 dot minus del L del theta 1 is equal to 0. You can do this operation for theta 2 and phi also. Okay. So, for theta 2 and phi also we can do the same trick to find d d t of del L del theta 2 dot minus del L del theta 2 is equal to 0, because in the again in those cases you will have this is nothing but del L 2 del theta 2 dot and here you will have del L 2 del theta 2. Okay. So, since they are related by Euler Lagrange equations, so this will be also the case for uh, this will be also an equation which will be satisfying the Euler Lagrange equation with L. Okay. And similarly, ddt del L del theta uh, sorry, del phi dot minus del L del phi will be equal to 0. Okay. So, you see that finally, we showed that L which is a summation just an addition of L 1 and L 2 will act as a representative Lagrangian okay, or a true Lagrangian for the combined system, where your set of generalized coordinates are just nothing but the collection of those uh, sub sets of this non interacting uh, generalized coordinates. Okay. With that I wrap up this lecture, thank you.